Lack and Greg Vegan Camp, the 24th of January 2019. So right now we have the fully raw Armin visiting the camp. Yo. He will just help uh, out a lot and maybe do some cycling and uh, have fun and stuff. Eating papayas. Eating papayas. Yeah, he will eat all the fruit here. So you told me that the papaya, you just ate the orange one, was uh, the fresh one from the tree. How was it compared to the, the ones that you find in Chiang Mai? Maybe three or four times better. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. And I got it from the Che Che. Okay, even. okay. Whoa, here you th thousand baht. These are Cavendish. And this mango actually looks much more healthy than the other ones, if you uh, can see the comparison. This is not the Nam Dog Mai mango, it's more of a local type of mango. And, and these flowers are like long and nice and good looking. This is a good looking mango. I think this mango was grown from seed not long ago. Lek has started pruning the the mangoes because like some of them are not like doing very well but anyway they they have a couple of fruits but let's see if they succeed and earlier we had like a lot of flies eating them or whatever i don't know what's going on that probably just needs a lot of water avocado so this one looks all also okay but like this one looks very not okay and I don't know the reason why. If there are any mango growers, like organic mango growers or even commercial mango growers that know what's going on, then please let me know. I would love to know. This looks quite healthy on one side and then it goes like, like this on the other and I don't know. Compared to last time, you can still see the mountains at this time. So the smoke season seems to, like the sky should be pretty clear now. I don't think this is a weather phenomenon. So the, the mountains are not as clear as they should be, but they're still visible. So that's a good thing that the smoke season is not super crazy right now. But it would be nice that we would avoid all the burning as I was talking about in the last episode of this tour. One of the oldest avocado trees here. So this has never, never been uh, watered after it came into the soil, but it has like a thick layer of mulch, which secures moisture from the night uh, for it to grow. It doesn't really grow that nice, but you can see that this is like an old stem here. Maybe it's because it has um, like a tough life, it will grow really nice in the future when when the real magic this is just above the iceberg the real thing is going on under the surface with all the roots and niceness and bacteria near the far edge of the the area here at the camp we have a beehive in this tree so it's a natural beehive and this is one out of three we currently have so it's a good motivation for us to have beehives it's like the bees are telling us we're doing good things, so I, I trust the bees here. But these are also like quite elongated. Mm. This looks like a termite nest. And this is very good. You can take some of that and mix it with water and you have uh, natural cement. Or you can also mix it with uh, rice husk and sand and stuff like that and you have like a really good binding material for building stuff or earth houses. Is it vegan though? And even some of the mangoes are, are pretty pretty big and nice and good looking. This was built by Lek and the other volunteers. Um, I helped a little bit. But it's a dome or a, like a net or like a structure for passion fruit. So there's like a net on top and the idea is that there will grow a lot of passion fruit around here in the future. Yeah and the bamboo was harvested also by the volunteers nearby. Nice to have the building materials nearby so that you can harvest yourself. Okay this is uh, this is amazing. 
Can you see what I can see? These are the first jackfruits at the camp, man. I know that it's like ridiculous to, to be happy about, but I'm happy. Um, because I think this is the orange type even. This is like super good that we have the first jackfruit coming. I'm very excited about that. And I'm seriously, I didn't see it before right now. So good things are coming. I'm pretty sure that these little um, wasps or flies still laying eggs inside and then there will be worms in the... So at, at this point a person or a human could pick it and then put it in a, in a net so no more eggs would be um, laid in the fruit. But otherwise you can also wait for the ripening process but this is like a good time to pick the fruit probably. Similar papaya it's around here. Also the bees or wasps or whatever are laying eggs in these. And this is a new small area where leg is gardening a bit. And we have radish here with a really tasty. Um, I love radish. So this is good. This is a small guy here. The little, not round. Some of them are a little bit round. Some of them are more like longer oval. Mm -hmm. Oval. But red outside. Yes. And strawberry survived from last year, and planted here. And some of them actually are getting fruit, and we harvested one. I forgot to ask like how it tasted, but they're more. Strawberries. Strawberries are always lovely to have, so that's nice. So we had the sunflower sprouts over there, and then it looks like Leg was replanting them or whatever here into uh, another nursery where we have the. I think these are sunflower seeds, so we have sunflowers there. Nice to look at, and they do <laughs> make it more biodiverse, and also it's nice to have the the sunflower seeds to um, to make the next batch of sprouts because they're so delicious and super healthy and with legs uh, avocado uh, dressing or avocado yeah avocado guacamole is really whew, nice yeah, and uh, this is like the dome into the spa area or like the spa area to become and this is like the wild wild raspberry we think but uh, I, I'm not sure. It looks like a raspberry, but very small. Not yet ready, but uh, you can still go and do yoga and meditate. Some people have been doing yoga here already. <laughs> and one of the projects have been to make a fence because of the chicken. When we leave this place, other animals come, and especially the chicken from the neighbor, come and destroy the garden. So like a chicken defense is one of the priorities, have been one of the priorities the last time here. The little tomatoes, the sour type, the Thai sour type, this is one of the plants that is already dying. It was like very, like producing a lot last, uh, last month and it was like growing well on the last episode. And the, the, the tomato I moved I thought it would die, but it actually grew to this size. And these, this is a different type. This is a, a bigger tomato. Uh, there's a little spider there. But these tomatoes are a, a little bit bigger. Maybe they're like more sweet even. So we can actually try one. Even though it's not completely red, this is more tasty than any red tomato I have had in um, the western countries. You could leave them to become more red but then there's like a more um, pro the probability that there will be worms and other stuff in them it will just be much higher. Yeah. I mean they're, they're not super sweet and they're not sweet at all. Mm. They're or a little bit sweet but mostly sour mm -hmm. but still good. I mean, I would rather compared eat. To that, compared to them, they're sweet. 
So oh, they're both tasty. So I mean, I would rather have one of these than a kilo of like a commercially produced tomatoes. Because they mainly just taste of water, they're commercially produced. In many cases. Some cases they're actually quite good. But you need to know where you're looking. If you want to buy tomatoes in Thailand, go for the Royal Projects. They have quite good tomatoes. And maybe you know somebody who grows organically also. It's like, then it might be good. But otherwise it's like... Yeah, I need to mention again that flowers and roses are very nice for biodiversity and bio pest control. So because they attract different insects that will take care of different other insects that eat our food. This is the second natural bi <laughs> beehive, which is also this is the first is like two meters from the house which is also like a good thing for me to like stay motivated and say okay we're doing good things and around here we grow beetroot which is also very nice it's good for the for the smoothies and otherwise beetroot is just nice and also like steamed beetroot I don't think I had it for a very long time so if you have a lot of beetroot it would be very nice to have some steamed ones also this is one of the like three tomato plants growing there, they will start producing at some point. The cool thing about this giant passion fruit is that we already harvested two of them and Lex said that there is one more somewhere ready to be harvested. Maybe that one over here. They smell really really nice fruity. Because in summer you did, you did not have it yet. These are the last of the of the salad and this these types of salad we grow here they're very bitter I don't know why some people say it's the variety or the type and some people say it's because it's uh, like you need to water at specific times but uh, I don't really know but anyway I like the Thai kale and it, the Thai kale is not bitter so the Thai styles is like better for me so the green pepper is not dead yet because I didn't mulch it much so it's not too hot. There's actually two green peppers. And here we had zucchini, but it didn't really grow well and the worms went into it. So they're all gone now. The chaom is getting new shoots. The chaom is just so good when it's... Uh, you can even eat them raw. And here is an example of a mango tree where there are like worms going in and there was like a mulch around here so what might have happened is that when the mulch is here it invites the worms to go here that's why uh, usually we don't do um, mulching under the the mango trees because the m worms will go into the the bark and the stem and it's just like not so good not so healthy for the for the tree and the exact same thing happened over there so it's not just like one Coincidence, so there's also worms in the bark here. The middle of the tree, the wood is dead anyways. It's just on the outside that all the water and the minerals go up. I mean, if you, if you know anything about the mulching of mango trees, I would also love to hear from you. And here is the last beehive that is the smallest one, but like three beehives in total, completely natural. And also this uh, tree is not an apple tree, but it's like a sweet apple something. And it actually is getting the first fruit here. So um, that's pretty... Star apple. No, I don't think it's star apple. It's like a really almost like similar to apple, but the best apple I've had, it's not like a uh, custard apple or something. It's like really Thai apple thing. It's really, really, really nice. Yes. Here's a dragon fruit patch. It's actually growing like wild right now. I don't know what's going on, but um, I don't know how we can... Uh, support it or control it because it's uh, it will just break at some point um, if we don't do anything this is uh, sugar cane which is also pretty nice and this is pineapple and this was super crazy the first pineapples are coming I was screaming when I saw this 
because I've been waiting for waited for a very long time for this to give fruit and finally it does. This is the second one. Number three. 